Hey, welcome to the Big Wyoming Reloading Series. Thought we'd take a second and talk about where we're at in the reloading process for this 308 we're tackling. Uh, we've selected a bullet, which is going to be the 175 grain Sierra Match King. Uh, we've got our brass, which we have. Uh, we're using once fired factory burger uh, Lapua brass. And then uh, we have IMR 4895 powder, and we're going to be using Remington uh, nine and a half large rifle primers. And essentially, that's because that's what I have at the time. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is talk about how we selected our starting charge weight for our powder test. One of the resources I use is the Hodgson website. Uh, if you come here, uh, we input the 175 Grain Sierra for the 308. Uh, we select our IMR 4895 powder. Uh, we can see that we got a starting load of 41 grains with velocity at 2463, a maximum load of 45 grains, and that's compressed with a velocity at 2704. Some things to note here is this barrel length is 24 inches. We're actually running a 26 inch barrel, so if we were to reach this 45 grains compressed load, we would see about 40 to 50 more feet per second uh, with this bullet. So remember that 2700, uh, because that's important. You can use your chronograph to help you see where you're at as far as pressure goes when you hand load. Another resource we look at, uh, if you go over here to ocwreloading.com, uh, OCW is optimal charge weight. It's one of the methods you can use to find out what the optimal charge weight is for your bullet combination. They have a, a link to some proven loads. We come up here to 308 Winchester using IMR 4895. They have a 175 grain bullet at 42.4 grains. So uh, according to the website, this is a proven stable pressure load that would allow you to be a grain up or a grain down and still maintain the same velocity. So that's something we'll note also. And then finally, the Sierra manual is available to us. And they have the 175 grain Match King listed here. If we come down here to our 4895 powder, we list a max load of 41.5 grains, but we're only running 2,600 feet per second. I believe up here at the top, it'll tell us they used a 26-inch barrel, which is what we're using, a 1 in 10 twist. That's the same, uh, different primer combination. So... I've got a spreadsheet over here that I've developed, and it is off of the 6-5 guys spreadsheet. And what we kind of did was we took that 42-4, and we went on each side of it, 0.2 grain increments. So we started at 41-4, we went to 43-2 as our maximum. So 41-6, 41-8, 42 42 2, 42 4, 42 6, 42 8, 43, and 43 2. So, essentially, what I'm doing, we'll call it a 60 shot, 10 shot method. So, I use six shot groups that has to do with uh, confidence in my data. I think I can believe, a, a, or I think I can ch achieve a 95% confidence rate with six shots. Uh, there's a link to some of that. We'll talk about that later. So I use six shot groups, um, you know, versus the 10 shot Satterley method, if you want to call it that. I believe this gives me more statistical confidence than just one single shot at each powder charge. And you could probably use five, and I think you'll see in this data that five would have pretty much turned out the same way. So the first step is we go to the range, uh, we take all these loadings that we've done. Uh, I use a magneto speed chronograph, I'm, I hang a target, 
but I'm not worried about my group size, uh, where I'm hitting on the target. You know, I have a POI shift with a magneto speed installed. And we just start shooting through these rounds. So my method was I'll shoot six. I take a five minute break. I shoot six. I take a five minute break. I shoot six all the way through. After each set of shots, I examine my brass for cratered primers, uh, extraction marks, uh, smearing of the case head, any signs of pressure that I can find. And once I record all that data, I'll come back here and I'll put it in the spreadsheet. So what we have here is we have our uh, individual velocities for each load. We have the mean and the average, the median, the min, the max, which gives us our ES. And then down here we have our ES and standard devi deviation. Ideally, we want these to be in single digits is what I'm looking for. Um, you know, to me, ES is more important because I believe at distance that's going to have more of an effect on your group size and ability to hit consistently. And then uh, I adopted this standard deviation plus one minus one from the six five guys spreadsheet. Uh, it's an excellent video. I think it's called analyzing uh, load data. Uh, if you can find that, I'll link it below, but take a look at it. So once we've done all this data, we've entered it. Some things that stand out here is uh, my low ESs. Um, you know, right at the 41.6, I've got an 18. But we come in here to 42.2 and 42.4. We're looking at a 16, a 13 with a low standard deviation of 6 and a 4.4. So really, it looks like the winner here is a 42.4, which is what the OCW website called out. Uh, I did start seeing pressure at 43 grains. I started to see uh, slight extractor marks on the case head. And then these were the, you know, just small impressions. You had to get it in the light just right to see it. But knowing that I had found a velocity and pressure node at 42.4, which was approximately 2,700 feet per second, which is about the max we are going to be at for this bullet and powder combination. I felt like I was safe to stop there, and what I ended up doing was breaking down these reloads, and I labeled them all pressure. So somebody told me a long time ago, you cannot turn a 308 into a 30 6 and with a standard throat and a standard magazine length, that is 100% true. You are not going to get the, the 2800s, the 2850s out of this combination unless you have a long throat and a long magazine length. Then you can load that bullet further out, have a higher powder charge behind it, and not see the pressures. So if we come down here to a visual representation of each shot, you'll notice that throughout these groupings, we have an extreme spread on all of these that show up predominantly until we get to the 42-2 and the 42-4 charge and that these group together. So that's a visual confirmation of what we saw for our velocities are close together. The next thing we chart is these standard deviations, minus one plus one, minus two plus two. And if you come down here, you'll see there's a significant uh, shrinking of those standard deviations around the 42-4 charge, which once again verifies the data that we're seeing here. So the next thing I did was, I did these at 0.2 grain increments. I came home, uh, I loaded 42.3 to see if that would maybe even be better or fall right in the middle of that group. Uh, ideally, if it falls in the middle of that group, as far as our standard deviations, our extreme spreads, that gives me uh, 42.2 to 42.4 uh, worth of error when I reload these rounds. So let's take a look at that right here. So right here you can see we added to the chart 42.3. We went out and shot that and we saw an extreme spread of 9 
and a standard deviation of 4.2. That's over a six shot group. I think that's excellent data. Uh, we come down here to the visual representations. Here's 42.4, excuse me, 42.2, 42.3, and 42.4. So once again, the data in the chart with visual representation shows us that our extreme spread is small on this. In fact, it was single digits. Then we come down here to our standard deviation charting, and we see the same thing. So 42.3 is where I've settled on my final powder charge. I believe it's going to be consistent. We have a low extreme spread, single digit as a matter of fact, across those six rounds. Standard deviation is lowest out of all of those charges. So we're going to do 42.3, knowing that we have some room on each side for our plus or minus one point grain accuracy on our scale, all the things we might run into while we reload. That's the variables we're trying to control. We know that if we load in the middle of this velocity node, we have a little room on each side for error to keep us with those low extreme spreads and low standard deviations. So the next step is we're going to take these rounds. I'm limited to a 2.8 inch mag length and we're going to start tuning for small groups by using our seating depth. So at this point, I'm going to load several rounds of different seating depth lengths to the ogive of the bullet, and we're going to go shoot on paper, and we're going to try to find, very similar to this, we're going to try to find a node for seating depth, which gives us a small group. So stay tuned for the results of that. See what the smallest grouping is that we can get out of this load combination and this rifle. And then I think we'll take a step back and we'll start talking about our brass prep, um, our powder loading procedures, um, our bullet seating. We're going to start getting into the details of how we load these rounds. But I kind of wanted to start in this direction to show you how we've selected the load to start with, uh, how we're going to tune that load for accuracy, and what our final results will be. I need you to like, subscribe, stay tuned for more content. Don't forget we got a Patreon linked below. And the reason we're doing that is because we're not going to be monetized. But we're not going to change our content because this is what people want, this is what we're interested in, and this is what we're here to share. So thanks again from Big Wyoming and Big Wyoming Adventures, and we'll see you in the next video.